be a bit tricky. So this is a part which seems obvious, but actually it's very important that you master this part uh, to make working with Modflow not that annoying and efficient. So to uh, learn about it, I will make a test pipe again. So like if you still have the previous test pipe on your screen, then you can get rid of it by going to File and New Empty Geometry. And then I'd like to make a test pipe which actually has more sides than five. So I will still use this test menu. I will ask for a pipe where the length and the radius ratio is 10. This is a pipe that is uh, like a normal ratio to fit your screen nicely. And then he asks me how many sides I'd like and I will ask for 100 sides. So like this site looks in volume view. Remember that with the right key you can actually rotate and with the mouse wheel you can zoom around. And then if I turn off the volume view, then here I can see uh, the wireframe of this facet. So by default, like here in the lower right corner, you can uh, select the tool you would like to work with. And the default selection mode is this. So this is like the normal facet selection mode. And this is which is enabled by default. So to select facets, the easiest way is to simply click on the screen and then by clicking on it, the selected facet will get a uh, uh, red outline. And also here on the lower right corner, as you click on a facet, he will show you that this is facet number two, and also the number of the facet is uh, selected here. So it's written like, I have selected facet number two. Now immediately as you start doing clicks, you can see one problem that, for example, if I'm clicking here, it's hard to know whether I'd like to select the end cap or the other facet on the opposite side. So several CAD programs have several solutions for this. In Modflow, what you need to do is without moving your mouse button, and this is uh, your mouse pointer, and this is important, you just keep clicking, and then Modflow cycles through all the facets that are under your pointer. So as opposed to trying to erratically click and find the correct facet, like really, it's a little bit counterintuitive, but you don't move your mouse, you keep clicking and the Moflow is cycling through all the facets that are under your pointer. Now, uh, this is for selecting a single facet. Another way is you can directly click on the number of the facet here in the facet hit list. So like you can scroll to number 70, click on it and then facet number 70 is highlighted. Obviously, even in volume view, you can see the selected facet, but by default, your volume is not transparent, so if you select something on the other side of your geometry, then you won't see it. However, there is a way to actually see that, even on the opposite side. Here in the top right corner, in the view settings, you've got this show hidden edges, and if you turn it on, then your geometry becomes transparent, and you can actually see facets on the other side as well. I turn it off. Now, this is for selecting a single facet and then you can select more than one facet. So just like in Windows, you would like click on one facet and if you hold the shift key, then if you can see that the mouse pointer has a small plus sign on the bottom right corner, which means that if I click on another facet, then it will be added to the solution and here I can see that uh, it's facet number one and facet number two are selected. I can keep adding uh, facets to my selection and by pressing the control key, which is the command key on the Mac, if you click somewhere, then all the facets under a pointer will get deselected. So one by one, I can deselect my facets. Now, another way to select multiple facets is to actually draw a box on the screen. So simply, you just hold the selection and then whatever is fully covered by your selection gets selected. So here, for example, I can select everything, like a large part of the facet, but the end caps are not selected because they weren't in my selection screen. Then I can press the shift key to add the end caps, or inversely, I can like select everything, press the control key to deselect, and I can deselect the end caps even if right now they are not visible. But to know that you have actually deselected something, you can see that now we've got 100 sides and two caps selected. And by pressing the control and deselecting the two edges, I know I've got only 100 facets selected. 
The other way to do that is like you can click directly on the number of a facet, then you can press the control key and then you can add or remove from the selection by clicking on it. So here you can select multiple. Another thing that you can do is you click on let's say facet 28, you hold the shift key and with the up and down buttons you can select consecutive facets. So to select all the slides I will be pressing the shift key, pressing the down and then you can see as gradually I'm selecting the whole geometry. Once again there is a very important thing that seems uh, very counterintuitive at first but actually it's an efficient way. Is let's say you already selected a few facets. For example, I have selected these three facets. And then you'd like to select the end cap. Now you press shift, you click on it. Okay, this has nicely selected it. However, since there are more than one uh, facet under your pointer, by pressing shift, you might actually accidentally select this facet in addition. So how do you do? Right now, I could select the end cap, but by doing that, now I've got many more facets as well selected, so this is not what I wanted. So what I will do, I, will, I was just deselecting this, is you can press the shift key, then it will select the first facet and add to your selection, but if this is not what you wanted to add to your selection, then without moving your mouse, you press the control key to remove from your selection. Once again, you don't, you don't move your mouse cursor, you press the shift key and then you select, and the mold flow is adding to your selection something that wasn't selected before. So to do that quickly, like I start selecting some facets, and then if I want to add something on the other side, okay, he selected the end cap, I remove it from the selection, and then I'm adding it again, and then you can like have fine control. Now you can see that this is relatively uh, difficult to uh, get a group of facets selected. So when you have correctly selected a part of them, then you can save your selection or memorize your selection. To do that, you go to the selection menu and you memorize the selection and here you can add a new group. So I can call it like five facets. You don't need to give a name, but you can add them. And then when you click away, you can recall these selections by clicking on the selection menu and then you can select the memorized group, the five facets. Now all this is much faster if you use the shortcuts. So here you can see that in the selection menu it's Command W or Control W on Windows to uh, memorize a new selection group. And to recall it, it's even easier. You can use the Alt key and 1 or 2 or 3 for other selection groups. So I go to the front view, I select a bunch of facets I'm just using Command V to select them as a selection group. And then using Alt 1 and 2, I can quickly switch between these selection groups. Moreover, not only can I switch between the selection group, but I can even combine them. So right now, I have pressed Alt 1 and I have selected these five facets. But if I press Alt 2, then I select the other group. However, by pressing Shift, which is a standard key for adding to the selection, and pressing Alt-1, so Shift-Alt-1, I combine the two, I could even save it as a third selection group, and then I can subtract from the selection by pressing Ctrl-Alt-1, so now I have kept the rest. So this is a really powerful way to uh, save parts of the geometry, and later we will see that selecting a part of facet have additional uses as well. For example, we can calculate physical quantities on a group of facets, which we have defined as a selection before. Now, one thing that's important is that many times you don't want to click one by one on all the facets. So either you find a correct view where you can like select everything and then, for example, remove the end caps, or you can use a smart select feature. So to use a smart select feature, you open up this window, you click on the analyze button, and then he analyzes the neighborhood relations of the facet. And then by clicking, you can select different parts of the geometry. So typically the two end caps, and by clicking on it, I can, he automatically detects all the uh, edge parts, but not the edges. So how can you have a finer control? Here you can have a tolerance, and it can tell uh, on flow, like what is a curvature 
in, uh, expressed in degrees where you'd like the selection to stop. So if I give a very large number, for example, 100 degrees, then when I click, all of the facets get selected. However, if I give a number which is lower than 90 degrees, which is a term what I have on the side, by clicking on it, he will only select those facets which have a rotation of less than uh, 90 degrees. Right now, we've got 100 uh, different sides. So if I say 4 degree, then he still finds the connection. However, if I press 3 degree, then he can only select individual facets because I've got a 360 degree turn divided into 100 steps.